so what 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 I'm what I'm in, encouraging you to do is is to use these eight laws or what the nine laws of Ramachandran, and now see mm -hmm. how imaginatively you can you can think about them to support a particular. Uh, to, so, I don't want to call it skill, but for the lack of a better word, we call it skill. So maybe you will do it in, in terms of literacy or academic writing or maybe something in arts if you want to teach children arts. Because typically, as I understand mm -hmm. very often, when people, when people teach children arts, it's not, it's not very easy to teach children um, aesthetic thinking and these laws are actually teaching you as a as a as a teacher how to about how many elements are being played out in art and how artists play with your brain in order to uh, pass the communicate a, a message to you or an impression or uh, to have mm -hmm. an impact on your perception systems so would you like to do it in in, in terms yeah. of literacy or would you like to do it in terms of teaching children art it might be good to do it in terms of um, teaching them art, only because um, I know that normally, if you talk about like assessment of art and that kind of thing, it's normally just um, is it creative, and and that's something you can't really grade. But this sort of gives you, in a way, a rubric yeah. of you know how to how to grade it. So that would maybe that would be what my question is then. Maybe finding a, a an acceptable rubric for that's it. visual arts. That's it. Yeah. So what you have, the problem context is you will say that the visual art is a little bit too much impressionistic at this very moment. <laughs> and we're, yeah. and so the assessment in visual art is too much impressionistic. What you would want to do is to actually theorize it a little bit. And the way, so, you know, this is a 500 words here already, you know, because you can, you can create a story about each of those sentences that we had just said. So. The, yeah. the assessment is is, um, is impressionistic, and you can say how it is assessed and what criteria you have. And at this very moment, it's too too vague. But we could actually theorize it a little bit. And if we theorize it, this is the point which matters. If we theorize it, it will not only give tools to teachers how to assess, but it will also give them tools about how to teach. Yeah. And no doubt we'll also be able to give students a, a goal, as in they'll know what they're aiming for. And the elements Obviously, to play they're with. They're provided Remember, with that rubric. They need, they need yeah. components. Uh, I want to teach you something that I've worked at when I was little, or when I was 20-something. And, and I know that nobody thinks like this. So I'm just going to tell you. Mm -hmm. It's called components. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you first uh, the experience, how I worked it out. And, and, and so, so, but, so in terms of your art, what it does, wh once you have this rubric, once you have, once you have different, once you work out how these, principle, how these principles can be, and don't think of assessment first. F first think about teaching, okay? Don't think of yeah. assessment. F first think about how these tr uh, uh, laws can be actually can be used can be unpacked in terms of different strategies that you could use with children in order to teach them to artistic eye you want them to actually develop an artistic mm -hmm. eye so first pedagogy because assessment will just follow trust me on this one um, so assessment yeah. yeah will just follow from that but if you think of teaching then you are more imaginative and more free when you start thinking of assessment you'll be constrained and, and nothing will follow so first do it in thing so what you have those nine laws to me are components and what you need to do is to play with those components in an imaginative way to create an, a, to create an environment for children where they can look at their own work and at even objects from which which they might use for um, for artistic expression in more than one way. And I'll tell you the story about components. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always up myself, you know, I am a Taurus by birth and I'm really up myself. I'm just the greatest genius on the planet, you know. So I'm sitting on the bicycle, I was 20 something in the gym when I was um, doing my PhD already, or maybe not, somewhere around this, I don't, anyway. I'm sitting on the bicycle, you know, on level three stationary bike and I am a queen on level three. Uh, 
but I thought I was a queen then. And this woman sits down next to me, right? She's tall and fat. And I just looked by the by and she's sitting on level 10. Not four, mm -hmm. not four, <laughs> just one above me, not five, 10. I thought these levels were there just for the fun of it. Nobody used them, right? What, why is she single? And I looked at this and I go like, oh my God. I go, and I said to her, and you are fat on top of it. How can you be doing such a high? Le and she says, she's Queenslander, right? So they're all very humble. And she says, yeah, I know I'm fat. Today, I'll tell you, she wasn't fat. She was just so muscly. Um, she's Australian yeah. champion in rowing. She, there were two girls. Everybody knew about one who also was coming to this gym of mine. So whatever her name was in the 80s, this other champion rower was there. But the other one, there was another girl who was sexually harassed, so she g r gave up on rowing, but she couldn't give up on her fitness. So she was there in the same gym as Adair. Adair, Adair something was in the 80s, this, this champion. So two girls were in, the, in my gym. The second one just gave up because of her sexual harassment. She's sitting next to me on the, in the gym mm -hmm. and doing this amazing thing. So then I thought to myself, I'll be better than her. Of course, nothing stops me. Mm -hmm. So what I thought to myself, what do I have on the bicycle? I looked at what I had, what I had, you see how I was thinking of, I broke my, I broke down the bicycle routine into components. So there was time and there were levels. And the third component mm -hmm. was my body, which is how much I can cope with it. And I devised yeah. a series of different ways. So I thought to myself, one training will be long, like 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Another training will be short, like maybe 15 minutes or 20, which will be ex diff and And I with these three components, which is length and power and the level on the bike. So this, the, the level on the bike, the time, and my capacity to cope with it, I devised ways and in which I could in different ways play with these components so I could increase my fitness. Within a year, I won a uh, University of Queensland uh, Strength and Fitness Championship. And a year and half a year mm -hmm. later, I won, I won Queensland Open. Okay. Okay. So that taught yeah. me forever, but every activity you can break down into elements, but then you don't reduce it to the elements. What you do, you enable a person to make to to play with these elements so that the, they can actually increasingly support them in their purpose mm, right yeah. so, so and i did think that no, no the ath athletes are not doing because i also was a professional basketball player so i knew what didn't work for me so i started working out things that did work for me so i did things differently and and so on so what I'm saying is also in this um, art thing, we have components, which is we have laws. Yeah. And then uh, from the laws, you would devise different strategies. Uh, and mm -hmm. then, so and the strategies should answer the same questions as, um, as with Samantha was saying, which is you've got, so you will have one, uh, what does he have, a law. So you will, so I, so you have a law, a particular law, one of his laws, right? Um, yeah. So that law could be peak shift. So in the peak shift, you have grouping, contrast, and isolation. There's probably four of them, but you've got so peak shift law will be about grouping, contrasting, isolation uh, strategies. All right. So what what are all of those grouping contrasts and I, what are the peak shifts? What's the job of that particular thing? Well, the job is to uh, create a strong co to ex to exaggerate. Yeah. So isolation is exaggeration, contrast is exaggeration, grouping is exaggeration. You know, so all of that. Mm. And then you can yeah. think. So so we have a job. So what experiences? can be provided for the students in order for this to be for this for, for these peak shifts, groupings, contrasting and isolation to be experienced. Mm -hmm. I will produce these experiences and so on that framework. I'll put it on the learn line for everyone to see. Cool. And then the next mm -hmm. one, this question is that so once you you know the job, 
which is what the peak shift does. You know the experiences you need to provide to the students. You will identify them for this job to be done. And then what kind what kind of uh, attributes of the environment? Uh, this is this is this is this is the same framework I use, but I don't know how it translates to words. So I'm just going to give you first the framework. What attributes of the environment? of the learning environment need to be put in place for these experiences to be provided? What attributes mm -hmm. of the learning environment need to be put in place mm -hmm. for, these for these experiences to be provided for the students so that the job of the peak shift is done? So you answer mm -hmm. three questions. What's the job of the peak shift and these different um, strategies within the peak shift? What experiences need to be provided for the students for this peak shift to be, uh, to be for, for, for the students uh, to, 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 do, to, to perceive the relevance of this peak shift? And then another one is what attributes of the learning environment need to be put in, need to be put in place in order for, for these experiences to be provided so that the job is mm -hmm. done. So it's, and you do it for each of those um, you do it for each of those three things, five or eight, nine things, right? Yeah. Now we will mix assignment one A and assignment one B. It's a four thousand words. A lot of it will be a mix of um, of Ramachandran, which is you you will produce a short summary of Ramachandran's techniques, Ramachandran's text. You just produce a, you just basically yeah. summarize what all these things. Then you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's your what should be. Then and and you will. So the, no, the first one is you, you. You give us the context. The first one was the thing that you were saying. But there's it's it's what we were saying before. I forgot about it. It's impressionistic, but yeah. needs to be a little bit um, theorized. So what we're doing is we're trying yeah. to theorize teaching of it and assessment as a result. And we will be doing this using these um, these tools. And we're gonna use this. And and then you do a little bit of the literature review. And then you um, start doing this sort of play with the analysis. I, I right, and as and, and I just have to. I can't remember what the assignment two was in place. But anyway, you will probably, as you write it, you'll be able to frame it in such a way that it doesn't go beyond. Uh, the required levels of assignment 1A and 1B. If it, yeah. I want very much that the assignment 2 is an extension of this one. Now, mm -hmm. if it happens that this assignment can only be written as 1 and 2, then write half of it, <laughs> submit it, and the rest of it you will write in the next one. So we're not really that much worried about mm. what the assessment tasks are. We're worried about doing this research because it's a new groundbreaking discipline, and I actually want to develop it, and I'm very interested in this mm -hmm. research. Yeah. Cool. That's great. I'm really happy the way it's going, really happy. <laughs> Cool. Now, um, okay, so we'll hold it there. I'm just going to close the, I'm just going to pause the recording at this very moment. Oh, I don't have to pause the recording, yeah. but, but basically what I wanted to say is regarding deadlines, um, please let me know how you're going. Okay, I'm recording this, so be mm -hmm. careful. So please let me know continuously <laughs> how you're going, if you need extensions. And that's possible. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you, in terms of in the in in the long run, how um, how much do you have to graduation? Sorry, how much do I have to do till I graduate? Yes, is that the question? Um, basically, uh, besides this topic, I've got um, one more actual studying topic and one prac. So. Yeah, next semester it will be fairly light on just one subject, one track. With whom are you studying? With whom are you doing your degree? Uh, Flinders University in yeah, Adelaide. Yeah, we, we picked up all the Flinders students for some reason. You're not the only one. <laughs> all right, so yeah. you basically oh, did the, So you're basically doing... So I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go I was going to say, yeah. We're basically, basically, yeah, Flinders, um, if there's any sort of unit that you have to outside of their normal plan, they normally just flick us over to Charles Darwin 
<laughs> That's my go-to genie. So, okay. I can see. Anyway, so, um, so basically, uh, as you have, um, I'm just going to close this recording now because I think that we have spoken yep. enough. That no need to.